It's one of the most liberal and pro-abortion cities in the nation, San Francisco. But gutsy pro-lifers chose this location to stand up for life and against abortion. So stay with me as I take you along on the sixth annual Walk for Life, California style. Eva Montaigne and Dolores Meehan are the co-founders and organizers of Walk for Life West Coast. After attending the March for Life in Washington, D.C., they were inspired to start their own. The first walk in San Francisco took place in 2005. It's steadily grown each year from 7,000 participants to over 30,000. Their mission is to establish a new West Coast tradition of celebrating life. They also want to change the perceptions of a society that thinks abortion is an answer. We both went to the March for Life in the year 2000, and we were both so moved by it. And um, You've been partners in crime ever since, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've known each other quite a long time, yes, and uh, we have the same you know, passion for what we do and for, the, for helping people for the pro-life cause. And so when we went to the march, we came back here, and you know, there's so many people that said they would like to go to the march if, they, if it wasn't so far away. What's been the reaction of the community of San Francisco to this march? And anecdotally, you know, several people I've talked to have were pro-choice beforehand, and then they do attribute their pro-life views and their change to pro-life to the Walk for Life. And Many and hearts have been changed. I, I think so. And Many I, hearts. So what do you I, think changed their hearts, though? You know, I really think it's seeing the crowd, seeing how many people, and, and just being motivated by the energy. It's amazing how many, how the, how having the support just rejuvenates you and motivates you and gets you out there. What do you want to accomplish nationally as far as its effects from the Walk for Life? To show people that if it can be done here, it can be done anywhere. To me, I've always said that I feel like we're a huge success if we can get people motivated to get informed and to take action. And for the young people that That's it's, right. it's huge. It's really fun. I mean, you'll see tomorrow there will be some counter demonstrations, but you you probably won't see high school students and college students demonstrating against us, but you'll certainly see thousands of them walking with us and uh, that's that's they're the future. So it's it's been great. San Francisco's culture has been poisoned by many things. The Walk for Life is brings something very positive to the culture of San Francisco, and we believe that um, we, our hope and desire, God willing, is that that will resonate across the country. And so the sort of the poison that comes from the culture uh, of San Francisco uh, that it doesn't have to always be that way. That 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 this will encourage people across the country that um, you can do anything anywhere. Before the walk begins, a rally is held that consists of pro-life speakers from across the country. Live Action President Lila Rose was among the group of speakers looking to motivate and encourage the walk's participants. Live Action is a new media movement working to expose the injustice of abortion through investigative journalism and educate young people about the truth of abortion. Their latest project was a series of undercover videos exposing what they call crimes of Planned Parenthood. We've uncovered outright medical lies that abortionists, that counselors tell women needing counseling, needing the truthful facts about abortion, about the procedure, telling them lies about the baby's heartbeat, the physiological characteristics of that unborn child, and then using very manipula manipulative, even sales pitch language to sell these $500 to $2,000 abortions to convince the women to abort. Lila, tell me a little bit about Walk for Life West Coast, what it's all about and what you'll be doing. I'm very excited to get to speak tomorrow morning. I remember going a few years ago and thinking, how cool would it be to talk to such a crowd? And to think that I get to talk to them tomorrow morning is a great honor, and I just hope that I say something that'll encourage someone. <laughs> well, it's a kind of a pretty gutsy thing to do, to stand up so visibly for life in an area that's so well known to be pro-abortion. Standing up in San Francisco, which is, they call themselves a pro-abortion city. I mean, the, the mayor came out and said that a few years ago. is a gutsy thing to do, but I love it. I think that's what's necessary at a time like this. Stand up where opposition is strongest and we're going to see results. How do you think the next generation, your generation, 
is going to impact the laws regarding abortion? We are very excited that about our generation, the young people, because we firmly believe that it's time that we stand up that we raise our voices and finish the work to end abortion. I mean, we're standing on the shoulders of those that have gone before us, that have been fighting for years in the pro-life movement. We're ready to use all of the experience, the technology, the courage, and build on it and finish this thing once and for all. When we return, we'll hear how the Walk for Life has gone international. Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications than any other entity in the world, and its materials are printed in over 30 languages. Radio broadcasts, newsletters, and a website filled to the brim with the answers you're looking for are just a click away. Go to FacingLife.tv and click on the link to Life Issues Institute to find out more about how you can change the heart of a nation. The same year Eva and Dolores founded the Walk for Life in San Francisco, another celebration of life was taking place across the globe. The March pour la vie started in Paris, France in January of 2005. It's steadily grown over the last five years. Eva and Dolores have now established a friendship with the Parisian March. Paul Genou Defermon is an organizer of the Walk and was a speaker in San Francisco this year. He talked about how abortion has become an international issue. He encourages Europeans and Americans to work together to combat this evil. Now in the past, I know that when I've been there, abortion really hasn't been that much of an issue. Is that changing now when you have more presence in the public arena? Mm, I think it's changing slowly. Every year since 2005, we are more and more numerous. They are more and more young young guys from and, uh, and girls from 15 to 25, you see, and it's very encouraging to, uh, for us, yes. So what message do you have for Americans as far as what you're hoping to accomplish in, in France? Um, I think that now uh, decisions are made uh, uh, more and more internationally, and uh, my message is that uh, European and American have to work jointly the pro-life uh, on both sides of the Atlantic have to work gently in order to have more effect on uh, the decisions which are taken, yes. What do you hope to accomplish today here in San Francisco? I think I, uh, I can bring the support from uh, France and also over European countries uh, uh, to encourage the American to, to keep uh, uh, strong to keep strong for uh, life issues, which are very important. It is uh, the, really the most important uh, fight that we can have, and uh, we must win it, and we will win it, certainly, yes. Despite rainy weather, the sixth annual Walk for Life West Coast saw an amazing turnout on January 23rd. Over 35,000 people took a stand for life and walked along San Francisco's Embarcadero. One way the walk distinguishes itself from the DC March is their main focus. They concentrate on the damage abortion causes to women and men and provide information and healing to them. A main speaker this year was Georgette Forney, a founder of Silent No More. The campaign works to make the public aware of the devastation abortion brings to women, men, and their families. As a post-abortive woman, Georgette understands the guilt and emotional scars that accompany abortion. An abortion is not going to take you back to where you were before you were pregnant. It will forever change you and it will forever haunt you and leave you feeling like 
it didn't do what you wanted it to do. Now, what message do you have for women who have chosen abortion and feel absolutely horrific about it and are really struggling with the emotional after effects? Well, help is available. I'm living proof that you do not have to live, you know, locked in the pain and the shame and the guilt and the nightmares and all of the depression. I'm living proof of it. I am a completely new person. Are the services that you offer expensive? Most of them are free. But I found for myself is that my healing was a process and it didn't happen overnight. And it was really about seven years of different programs and, and kind of allowing myself to look at the different facets of my pain. So the message is be patient through the process? Yeah, okay. and, and you'll get to a place and of the Silent No More folks, a lot of us speak out publicly, but the bigger goal with Silent No More is not that we're all out here on the streets sharing our abortion stories, but sharing it one-on-one, -on -one, sharing it with the next generation. We don't want to see another group of men and women, young men and women, go through what we've gone through. So if you, sh if you have a ne nephew or a niece, a grandchild, let them know what you've done. Tell them your story so they can make better choices. Jim Garlow is the lead pastor of Skyline Wesleyan Church in La Mesa, California. A well-known author and radio program host, he was instrumental in the passage of Prop 8. In his speech to the crowd, he spoke of his hope for a great awakening within the country regarding abortion. Uh, we think 14 months ago, when there was a sudden inexplicable change in the Gallup poll, nine percentage points on the issue of pro-life, Everybody thought it was an aberration at first, and then it proved to be for real. And people like you and your ministry standing, and many others, it is making a difference. Science and technology is backing up what the Bible already says, that in the womb, that's still a life, that's a person. And I have reason to be very encouraged. I, it's a strong statement, but I actually think that within my lifetime, and I'm not a young guy, within my lifetime, I plan to live a while, that we can see Roe v. Wade overturned within my lifetime. I, I pray for that and believe for that. So what would you attribute to the change of season on the abortion issue? I, I know there are several research organizations I, I, that have tended to bear this out, that when people are forced to think on something, they can begin to see the chance for truth. And in this particular case, when they realized they had elected a pro-abortion president, a pro-abortion Senate, a pro-abortion house, and they already have a pro-abortion Supreme Court, at least based on Roe v. Wade. When people saw that, it was like it forced them to say, wait a minute, this is, this is too much. This is not a good thing. History is going to be very hard on the people who were silent. History is going to be so hard on the people who were either pro-abortion, who were silent. No one wants to be in that camp where years later, when, when fully, when the full society comes to the awareness of the kind of torture that was occurring in the abortuaries, the killing centers, a hundred years from now, there's going to be tours in the abortuaries of America. People are going to be taken in and said, where, where were people? Why weren't they screaming out against this kind of butchery going on here? And I want to be one of those who said, I was there fighting it. I was there standing against it. I was there politically incorrect. I was standing for God's biblical truth on this issue. So I would say to anybody, get off that fence. You don't want to be judged by history the way that many are going to be judged by history when it's fully revealed the horrific, horrific holocaust of abortion. In a moment, we'll hear about the backlash the Walk for Life West Coast has received from the liberal city of San Francisco. Thank you for inviting us into your home. Each week we feature real people who deal with real life issues head on. Some of their experiences are uplifting, while others will break your heart. But in the end, the message is clear. Those who follow biblical principles on the issues of life are blessed. Become a partner with us in providing a positive, life-affirming message to help change the way the next generation values innocent human life. Please consider a generous gift to help offset the costs of producing this important quality programming. You can donate on our secure website at facinglife.tv or by calling the phone number on your screen during normal business hours. Together, we can make a real difference for life.
During the walk's first year, Eva and Dolores saw a substantial protest from the city of San Francisco. Planned Parenthood organized nearly 3,000 pro-abortion demonstrators to come out in opposition to the 7,000 pro-life walkers. The surprise came listening to them when I was on stage hearing the crowd from the demonstration, the counter-demonstration with the mayor and with all the Board of Supervisors, with our district attorney. They all came out. They against all came us. out against us. They rallied, they actually incited people, really incited people to violence against us, a group of about 3,000 and we were 7,000. And it was um, funded by Planned Parenthood and they were there, uh, Planned Parenthood Golden Gate and also NARAL. And, it, and the mayor was up there, you know, given his spiel. And um, it sounded, it sounded like, you know, when the orcs were marching on Helm's Deep in the, the second Lord of the Rings? I was on the stage and I heard this, you know, they were all coming down Market Street and they were so loud. And we were completely quiet and peaceful. That first year, the, the, my most vivid memory of it is uh, walking out um, from the stage and onto Embarcadero, which is the big street that we walk down on, and taking that corner. And it's like Dolores said, because the, they were all lined up along the street, the op opposition, and they were so rabid. I mean, they were yelling, they were screaming. And I just remember so distinctly thinking, oh my God, what have we what done? Have done? <laughs> that's what I, th that's what was so clear in my head, what have we done? And it was so scary. But you know what, the scariness for me uh, lasted maybe 30 seconds, yeah. you know. And, and then it was utter peace. And just it, it, and it went so well and so smoothly, and it was it was it was like it was divinely inspired or something. Yeah, but. it was. <laughs> and then so the S San Francisco Police Department, they were awesome. Yeah, they were. And they saw it, and um, they were really they were concerned because people were doing pornographic gestures and nudity and like really weird, crazy, lewd and stuff. Spitting and eggs. Spitting at children right. and at priests, um, and. It was, uh, and the screaming, you know, the noise, but we were completely quiet and uh, no interaction and people were really, really, really held to that. And it won the hearts of a lot of people to see. The lewd protests were splashed across the media. Due to such a negative image, Planned Parenthood hasn't been involved in organizing protests since. As a result, the number of pro-abortion demonstrators during the Walk for Life has decreased each year. We did have a chance to talk with one group of protesters. The so-called Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence came out to express their pro-abortion opinions about the Walk for Life and its cause. It's kind of ironic that there's a lot more children here on their side being dragged here and forced into trying to understand what they're actually here for. Uh, personally, I don't have to worry about an abortion because I'm never going to have one and I'm never going to make one. But the choice should always be there for women who have to or need to have an abortion and it should always be safe and legal. I think this is just another group trying to impose their theocracy on the public. The last right you have is the right to make decisions regarding your own body. What's your response to those who say that the unborn child, as they say, or fetus, is a unique individual and separate from the life of the mother? We are all unique individuals. Everyone that is alive is a unique individual. The fetus cannot live until there's a brain. But if it has a beating heart, does that change the focus for you at all? My furnace has a motor. That doesn't make it a, a living being, and that makes it a thing. At what point would you say that the life within the womb becomes human and is, should be protected? I agree with the state of New York. It becomes a life the minute it inhales and exhales. So not until after birth? That's correct. This is a sizable uh, group showing in San Francisco. Is that an indication you think that more people are pro-life than pro-choice these days? I'm not sure. I know that we're in a unique situation here in San Francisco. It's kind of a bubble, but I would, I would hope to think that there are more people out there really willing to take a full look at the picture and see that whether you're pro-life or not doesn't matter. Keeping the option open is really the issue. Coming up, we'll hear how events like the Walk for Life are instrumental in the fight to end abortion.
Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications than any other entity in the world, and its materials are printed in over 30 languages. Radio broadcasts, newsletters, and a website filled to the brim with the answers you're looking for are just a click away. Go to FacingLife.tv and click on the link to Life Issues Institute to find out more about how you can change the heart of a nation. At the end of the walk, participants gathered at Marina Green for an info fair where groups like